That is really good. Aren't you guys cold? I like the name up there where it says Future Water World. Ni hao. Good morning, explorers from a freezing Universal Studios Beijing. This is my first visit here and I am super excited to take you around to show you what's inside, what there is to eat, some merchandise, and of course, entertainment. You can probably see my breath here. It's currently minus 11 degrees Celsius and it's gonna be in the minuses all day today. And for full transparency, our tickets today were provided so we can come and check out Universal Studios Beijing. With that said, let's get inside. I love the snow that's on top there. You never see this at other parks. You might see it briefly at University of Japan, but yeah, not very often you see the snow. So the walkway here goes over to the hotel you can see there. And then we're gonna go underneath, I'm guessing, to get into the park. This is huge. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's hard to show this on video, but this is grand. So for this, we have to show our passports. There's no physical tickets. Everything is tied to your passport. Getting inside was pretty painless. And the entrance here is very wide. And I'm not gonna lie, having snow makes me so happy because to me, Christmas is not Christmas without snow. Growing up in Canada, if we didn't have snow on Christmas, it was, it was a sad day. So seeing snow just makes me very happy. Gigantic Christmas tree at the end here. Oh, what's over here? Is this the, the Universal Theater? Oh, wow, that is gorgeous. Is this where the Kung Fu Panda stuff is? It looks like it. Well, we are definitely doing that later. Next show's at 11.30. I've heard good things about it, so I'm looking forward to that. First thing we're gonna do is the Jurassic World ride, because it's only a five minute wait, so I wanna do that. It looks like the queue for Jurassic Flyers, which is closed currently. So some of the outdoor coasters are closed because it's too cold and because of the snow, I think. Right across from the Jurassic Flyers is the Amber Ridge restaurant. So what do they got here? So they have fried shrimp with rice and braised pork knuckle, chicken curry with rice. Ooh, the chicken curry sounds nice, actually. Sounds nice and warm. Ah, here it is, Jurassic World Adventure. Five minute wait. Hello. Oh, here we go. The animatronics in that alone are worth doing this attraction. They were phenomenal. <laughs> There's a part where they actually chase you. 
eventually get your heart going. The ride system is basically Spider-Man, but nothing wrong with that. I'm glad that it's indoors. Yeah, the animatronics are top notch. What, what I was gonna say. What is this? It's a little egg, isn't it? Wait, is this a drink bottle thing? It looks like it. Yes, it's a drink bottle. <laughs> That's cute. It is something. 149. They have a whole bunch of Jurassic Park merchandise. T-shirts and plushes. That's a really cool jacket. The classic exit through the gift shop. Transformers Battle for the All Spark. We're gonna do that. Five minute wait. Oh, cool. A few moments later. What is this? <gasps> that is so cute. Is this a popcorn bucket? Ah. Uh, I, I don't know. The back does open. Either way, that is super cute. Oh, I love that. I love it. I was a Transformers kid. Growing up, I was a Transformers kid. 179. There's a ton of Transformers merchandise, but this, this is a standout. <laughs> I love that it has a built-in mask in it. If they had Bumblebee, I would buy that in a heartbeat. But they have a ton of... Transformers merchandise. A lot of models. My favorite Transformers were Bumblebee and Ironhide. Were you a Transformers kid? Let me know. And let me know what your favorite Transformer was. Oh. It's taking me back to my childhood. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, 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 okay. I found, I found the, I found the, the hat. <gasps> yes. Okay. Okay. This is good. This is really good. How much is this? Two twenty nine. I don't know what that is. Oh, do I want this? I, I, it's so good. I'll think about it. So if you've done Transformers in the US or in, also in Singapore, it's exactly the same as that. So if you were to come here and you've done Transformers, you can easily skip that. Nothing has changed. But the merchandise, top notch. I love the hat. I wish it would fit on my head though. Oh well, c'est la vie. Then we're going into Kung Fu Panda. Welcome, thank you. Kung Fu Panda, Land of Awesomeness. <laughs> that is on brand. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> they have the hats, the fuzzy hats of the characters. How much is this? Two twenty nine. Oh, that's so adorable. <gasps> Look at the gloves. One twenty nine. 139 for the earmuffs. Look at the earmuffs with, with him on it. That's, oh, they're very soft. I've noticed there's a lot of earmuffs. Like they double as headbands, but they also keep your ears warm. That is very clever design. Ni hao. This is adorable. Oh, 
It smells sweet in here. Oh, this is really lovely. <gasps> Look at the tree. <laughs> that is really fun. We love a well-themed carousel, don't we? I'm just soaking it all in and I'm glad that you're joining me. Very chill video today. Oh wow, this is really nice. Oh, this is a, an attraction. Journey of the Dragon Warrior. I have no idea what this is. Well, you know what? We're gonna ride it. Why not? These queues are definitely built for crowds. Is this an attraction disguised as exercise? Exercise disguised as an attraction? <laughs> Man, this queue is huge. <laughs> a lot to look at though. <laughs> Almost there. I like that. All right. I was not expecting this, like at all. Very pretty posters. That's our picture. <laughs> Look at all the merchandise here. All this stuff is cute. Oh, look at the headband. <laughs> the headband's really cute. Well, if you're a fan of Kung Fu Panda, there's definitely a lot to choose from. Definitely leaning into the cute stuff, right? I mean, that is adorable. <laughs> Wait, what is this? What is, oh, no, 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 please no. Please don't, please, oh no. Oh, that is so cute, that is so cute. Look at, <laughs> oh no. Is it, it is a little popcorn bucket. So I'm noticing popcorn buckets are smaller, like, Shanghai Disneyland, it was small too, like the popcorn buckets. I'm, I'm guessing that's what this is. That is so, oh my goodness, that is so cute. 179, that is too much, too much cuteness. I want him, oh, come on with me, oh. You're, you're gonna go back on the shelf for now. That is so cute. Baby. <laughs> and they have some pins too. All Kung Fu Panda. I'm gonna try the pins. 49. Magnets and little pass holder case. Oh, I like that. Universal Studios Beijing. 59. Anything that has the name of the park on it, I'm all about. Give me some more magnets. Oh, yeah. Oh, is this the Year of the Dragon stuff? Oh, yep, it is. Hey, Poe, how you doing? <laughs> the Kung Fu Panda boat ride was unexpected. I had no idea that was a thing, and I was very pleasantly surprised. They had a good mixture of screens. The screens were very crisp, crystal clear and uh, practical effects as well. I wish there was a little more animatronics in some of the parts, because some of it felt a little empty to me, 
But overall though, very unexpected family boat ride. That queue was very long. And that reveal kind of into the loading area was very grand, very beautiful. Well, well done, well done. What is, what is snoring? Something is snoring. Oh my goodness, is there, there's a pig. Yeah, he was snoring on the job. Look at the tree over there. And that's projection mapping, that is beautiful. We have the different warriors. They're all lit up. I have to say, this is gorgeous. I honestly was not expecting this. This is definitely the family friendly area for families. And the theming is wonderful. There's another restaurant here. I love the atmosphere. Grandma Panda's kitchen. Ho's Kung Fu Training Camp. That sounds like exercise. <laughs> it looks like a play area. <laughs> There's a lot of fun photo ops too. Oh, you can go in there. Oh, that's fun. The theming inside the Kung Fu Panda area is excellent. Completely unexpected with just how well done that area was. So we're gonna head on over to see the How to Train Your Dragon show. So we're gonna pop over there and then we'll probably have to get something to eat because it's at 11.30 and I don't want to miss it. This is very majestic. Oh, this is awesome. The production value of the How to the Training a Dragon show. I wonder what the budget for that was because Flying Toothless, that was probably the highlight of the show with the live singing, all the dancers and everything. The production value for that show was really well done. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that again. We're gonna watch that twice, I think, or maybe thrice. We'll have to see. We decided we're gonna do Mel's Drive-in, I was gonna say die-in. <laughs> That's Halloween Horror Nights. I like to see the differences for restaurants that I recognize. So we're gonna do this. And look, Rudolph is on the top. <laughs> oh, there's a show going on over here. <laughs> That's cool. But I'm hungry, I, I wanna eat. So I got the uh, Szechuan chicken with some cheese on it. We got pickles and a tomato, some sauce. Let's try it out. There's kind of like a pepper mayo on here. It's not as spicy as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be super spicy, 
It has a little bit of heat, but not too much. The chicken is nice and tender and crispy. Cheese is nice. I could have done without the tomato, to be quite honest. It's a decent size. Like, this will definitely fill you up, especially with the fries and the drink. I'm gonna give this a three. A solid three. It's not gonna blow your socks off, but it's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, it's just kind of middle of the road. It's a safe bet. My cameraman got the Thai burger. I'm not gonna try it, but I will just show it to you. So the top there is fried chicken. So it's fried chicken on top of beef. <laughs> That's a hefty burger. And it also came with this. We're not sure what this is. It looks like a collaboration of some sort with something we are not aware of. So apparently this is ice cream. Okay. If someone knows what this is, please let us know. Now that we had lunch, we're gonna go and see lights, camera, action. It's only a five minute wait. How to Train Your Dragon and Waterworld. E.T., Sing, and Jurassic World. So the video at the beginning was definitely different. There was another director there that I'm not familiar with. You can tell it was filmed rather recently. Uh, it differs from the one in Singapore, if memory serves me correctly, the beginning part anyway. The rest of it was the same. But it's always good. I love practical effects. I think it's fun. 1.30 right now. And I'm gonna check the wait times. So I did see that they did uh, go up a little bit. So I'm guessing just like every other theme park, if you're here early enough, you can do things, you know, rather quickly. We're gonna go over to Minions Land here. We haven't been over here yet. Good old Minion Land. So a lot of the restaurants opened at 11, because I know earlier in the day, because we were in here right at nine, a lot of things like the restaurants weren't open yet, but a lot of them are now because they open at 11. Open a little bit later. Let's go in here. Aren't you guys cold? That looks cold. Another indoor area, that's fantastic. Again, weather, right? Nice and warm in the winter, nice and cool in the summer. And there's a long line for something. Oh, Minions meet and greet. Which has a 30 minute wait. In the back here they have a snack stand. Silly snacks, chorizo with mustard, cheddar cheese sauce, hot dog, and a Minions cupcake. Little indoor coaster. Loop-de-loop, -loop. 60 minutes. Yeah, we're not gonna do that, but we'll, we will appreciate it from afar. I thought this was an attraction. No, it's a restaurant called The Lair. So let's see what kind of food they have. So they have chicken satay pizza and seafood pasta with white wine cream sauce, fried chicken with fries. And we have black pepper sauce wok, fried beef with rice. Chinese barbecue pork fried rice and braised tofu with seafood. It's quite colorful in here. There's a lot of photo opportunities everywhere. And we got some merchandise in this big old Minion Mart. That's cute. 
Oh, there's uh, Despicable Me, the guru attraction. That is a 50 minute wait for Despicable Me. We're not gonna be doing that. But I do like how colorful it is. Everything is just like really grand. And we have the Sing on Tour theater show. We have another restaurant called Salsa and Salsa. Let's see what they got here. What's on the menu? Got steamed chicken with mushrooms, teriyaki beef burger with fries, and Korean braised beef brisket. Oh, and a little minion Swiss roll. Cute. The little chicken coop. <laughs> you can get a roasted chicken leg. So we walk out of Minion Land, and there's Jurassic World. And then if you walk this way to the right is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which we're gonna go to next. I love seeing how the different entrances are for all the different areas that exist in other places in the world. Wizarding World of Harry Potter. There is quite the wait to get into the free broomsticks here. For reference, it's about 1.30 in the afternoon right now. Probably the hippogriff is over there. It's not running due to the weather because it's cold. And we have Hogwarts right there. Oh, this part's a little bit different over here. Right, well, there's a lot of people here taking pictures, so. Oh. Oh yeah, this is definitely a big old photo opportunity. That really adds to the ambiance. So inside Ollivander's here, you know, you can buy the wands just like every other Wizarding World, but every Wizarding World in the world has an exclusive wand and this is the one for Beijing. So this is the one that you can get and it is the red oak and unicorn hair. And it is 369 is what it is. So look, look for the red box. If you wanna collect them all from all the Wizarding Worlds around the world. So the one that I showed you was their everyday exclusive. I guess they also have a yearly exclusive one for Beijing based off of my research. That is what I can tell. So there's this one here and they have a display version that we can look at. It costs $499, so it's more expensive. It's the 2023 Collector's Wand Edition, and you can see it right here. That's what it looks like. That's really nice. It looks like, looks like the Phoenix. So we're leaving Hogsmeade here, and this is the walkway to go out. And this is one of the other entrances. This is where the car is. I was wondering where it was, because it wasn't in when we walked in. So we're back in Waterworld. There's an entrance to Waterworld, and it's closed. And I like the name up there, where it says in uh, Mandarin. Basically, Future Water World. <laughs> I do want to try this restaurant. Actually, let's check out what, the, what they're actually serving. I love that there's actually a vaguely themed restaurant to Waterworld because you know what, that's what the world asked for. The world said, we need a water world restaurant. And you know what, Universal Studios Beijing delivered with some double cheeseburger with fries, drifter land and sea, <laughs> and cheeseburger with barbecue sauce and fries. Okay, sounds a little generic, but I will let it slide because <laughs> I just love that there's a water world restaurant. That's what I'm dubbing it, the Waterworld restaurant. Well, the inside is pretty fun. I was just curious what it looked like inside. <laughs> so this morning when we got in, the wait times were rather low and now it is 2.30 and the wait times have gone up. So Transformers is 45 minutes. Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is 80. Despicable Me is 70. Jurassic World Adventure is 50. Decepticoaster, oh, the Decepticoaster is actually open. It's at 30 minutes. Yeah, so if you're here early enough in the morning, you can probably knock out most of the attractions as we did this morning. Well, we're back 
where the Transformers are. Swerve's Lounge. Let's see what kind of food they got. Grilled lamb skewers with pita bread. Grilled German sausages with sour cabbage and barbecue pork spare ribs. They have toothless ice cream and I bought it and I thought, oh, I need to eat this really quick. It's gonna melt. Uh, no, it's freezing outside. So I've actually been holding on to this for like the last 20 minutes. We're in the Christmas market area and it's minus three right now. Here's toothless ice cream. What is the flavor? Coconut and pineapple flavored. That is really cute. Uh, has a taste. That is really good. The coconut is very powerful in this. And then the pineapple is like pretty subtle. It's nice and creamy. Mm. I'm in love. I am in love with this. This is so good. I'm, I'm gonna have to get another one. This is gonna get a five. A rating of five. Yep. Hands down. It's not too sweet. The coconut is perfect. The pineapple is subtle. It doesn't overpower the coconut. It's the perfect winter treat. Ice cream. And there's this event area. And right now it is a Christmas market with food and some merchandise. And there's a special show that's happening. So yeah, we have some food over here. Let's check out what some of the food is. It's really cute. So there's hot chocolate and winter popcorn. I wonder what flavor those are. Mulled wine, meatball wrap, turkey wrap, and a whole bunch of little desserts. That's very festive. We have some popcorn buckets here. There's the character from the ice cream that we saw earlier. And then we got Tim, and he's wearing a little hat. Because you're the dragon, right? And then we have Toothless popcorn bucket. And the popcorn is dragon fruit and peach flavored. You know what? We're going to try that. I want to try that out. Look at the popcorn. Dragon fruit and peach. I am looking forward to this. It smells very fruity. And I love that it's red. Matches How to Train Your Dragon. Frame myself better. There we go. <laughs> there was a lot in here. Like, this is pretty big. Like, that's big. The dragon fruit is very sweet. So I really don't taste the peach in here at all. I do taste the dragon fruit. The dragon fruit's nice. It's a little subtle. I wish it was more pungent. I'm gonna go with the three on this one. I wish the dragon fruit was a lot more pungent. I don't taste the peach anywhere in this. I give it a three, but I'm gonna eat the whole thing. I know I am. You can meet the fairy godmother and she's in her winter outfit. That is amazing. <laughs> I love her. I <laughs> Who are you? Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? Chris. Tell me who you are. I'm Chris. Chris, where do you hail from? I hail from Canada. Canada? Yes. For oh, Canada. <laughs> right. Yep. Am I correct? Very correct. I know I am. It's Thanks. perfect. So the shops in the front have pretty much all the merchandise that you can find at all of the different lands. So Kung Fu Panda, Wizarding World Harry Potter, Minions, Jurassic Park. I'm pretty sure I saw stuff with Transformers. Yeah, Transformers. So if you think you missed something, well, just come to the front. It's pretty much all here. Here we go, they have Universal Studios Beijing branded stuff, so that's nice. It's kind of like a spirit jersey, I guess. Oh, I like that one. Nice fleece. Oh, a nice jacket. 
44, 49. And like that says Universe Studios Beijing there. Oh, that's cool. I kind of, I really like that. Then we have a long sleeve t-shirt and a hat. 179. Bucket hat. I, I think it's funny that bucket hats have come back in style. 229. We have some mugs. This is Beijing. 129. Ooh. A nice tote bag. This is 199. Big old fleece blanket. Yeah, the same design on the, the t-shirt that we saw. How much is this? It is 169. Oh, this is really nice. Universal Studios Beijing. Oh, it's a tea infuser. Ah, because there's a lot of hot water stations around. So that makes perfect sense. It is 239. Then there's this mug. 129, that's really nice. I like that design. So I'm getting myself a pin. It's 59 and this magnet set. I'm gonna get myself that. I really like that. You saw this design earlier. Oh, sorry, the pin's 49. The magnet set is 59. So they have other magnets as well. <laughs> you can meet Poe. He's in front of the bamboo Christmas tree. That is so cute. Oh, I love him. <laughs> The Christmas show was a lot of fun. <laughs> I love seeing uh, Shrek and Fiona with their Christmas outfits and the singing and everything and the stage was actually really beautiful, very Christmassy. I was not expecting a show like that, if I'm being honest. That was a pleasant surprise. There's been a lot of pleasant surprises today. So we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna watch the tree lighting ceremony, which is on in about half an hour. So we're gonna rest up, probably inside Panda Land, Kung Fu Panda Land, and then we're gonna watch the tree lighting ceremony. Universal Studios Beijing is proud to present our sparkling Christmas tree spectacular. lighting ceremony that was really cute <laughs> it's cold so you know what we're gonna head out for the evening but don't worry we're not done we're coming back for day two so let's fast forward doesn't work with the gloves does it take my gloves off there we go okay here we are day two let's go the first part we did when we got into the park was Jurassic Park because that ride is wonderful. It is worth coming to Beijing for. Then we came over to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and we did the Forbidden Journey. And the locker system is different here. So you put it in one side and then when you exit the attraction, you pull it out on the other, which I think works really well. And everything is 
facial recognition here. Your ticket is linked to your face. Express passes, same thing, and the lockers inside. It's all facial recognition. So for our park tickets, it was linked to our passport. So they scan our passport and then our faces are scanned and that's it. Everything else is just done with our face. Makes it, I guess, efficient. The parade was super cute. I like that they rearranged the music, like the iconic songs from each of the franchises, not just, you know, getting the track off of Spotify and playing it, you know? I like that they actually rearranged it. That was really nice. My favorite was probably Kung Fu Panda and Shrek. So for the parade, it goes along like in front of the front of the park and then down past Jurassic Park. We watch it from the Jurassic Park area. You can just kind of get a spot maybe 10, 15 minutes before, at least based off of my experience, and you should be able to get, you know, a decent spot. So the Jurassic Flyers, it starts on the inside. That's really cool. And there's, it looks like a, like a jungle gym type area for kids over there. Ooh, 80 minutes. A few moments later. Jurassic Flyers was a lot more awesome than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be similar to the version in Singapore, which it kind of was. But this one did a lot of rotating and it starts off inside, which I think is nice because it's nice and warm. It's sitting at 110 minutes right now. Um, it seems very popular and it looks like the magic number, and don't quote me on this, this is just based off of what I can tell, because it's so cold out, of course, this is one of the attractions that closes, but I think it's minus three degrees Celsius is when, if it gets above that, then they open it. That's what it seems like. So when that happened, it was a big rush of people to come and ride it. So hopefully it stays open for the rest of the day. Yeah, this is definitely one to do. And you get a nice view of the park too. It kind of, it takes you all around. So we came to Mr. Ping's and we got some noodles. I got hand pulled noodles with beef and it smells delicious and it's a party amount. I love the theming in here. They really went, I'm gonna say overboard in a really good way. Very extra. So I'm not sure what's in the broth. Which giving me like a, you know that feeling in your mouth when you have mint? That's kind of what it's giving me. It's interesting. <laughs> the beef is nice and tender. I like that. So overall, it's not the best. It's pretty bland in its flavor, I guess. A rating, I'd probably give this a two and a half. Very middle of the road. So we had to reassess my life. Uh, I didn't realize that we had these on the tray. So there's chili oil and vinegar. We got another dish, I'm not having that. So we thought maybe this was for it, but no, it's actually for the noodles. I don't know how much, I'm not gonna put too much chili oil cause I don't know how spicy it's gonna be. And if I'm doing this wrong, please tell me in the comments. I want to learn, I wanna know, make sure I'm doing it right. That is much better. That is not bland at all. Ooh, yeah, there is some heat now. Ooh, yes, please. Mmm. 
Okay, that makes it a million times better. I'm gonna reass reassess this. It's still not like the greatest thing in the, in the world with the added chili oil and the vinegar. I'm gonna give it an extra star. So I'm gonna give it a three. And there's Shrek in his Christmas outfit. That is fun. <laughs> We're gonna have dinner at Hammond's. This is a table service restaurant themed to Jurassic Park. I think that is brilliant. From what I can tell, there's no reservations for this, so you just have to walk up. Probably if we came earlier, we'd probably get a table a lot quicker, but I'm not gonna complain with 35 minutes. We had to use uh, Deeple. I don't use Google Translate. Um, we use Deeple for translating, so you can do uh, voice to text and it'll translate it. So we did that to communicate, because the girl up front, uh, she didn't speak uh, English and we don't speak any Mandarin, so. It, it works, it gets the job done. We're sat at our table and it is gorgeous in here. I love all the different portraits with the dinosaurs. And we also have a nice view of the front of the park. You can see the Christmas tree in the back. So this is the menu. There's stuff that you can eat in this menu. That's how restaurants work, Chris. Hammond's burger, that looks nice. Chicken sliders, fettuccine alfredo. I'm liking the little logos that they have here. We have a grilled sirloin steak, a roasted taff chicken, spicy fried potatoes, lamb, pork. Ooh, cheesecake, hello. <laughs> it's cute. Fossil egg excavation. I got the French vanilla hot chocolate and this smells so good. Oh, popped open. I know my mom is probably watching this right now and I know how much she loves French vanilla too. I think that's where I got it from. <laughs> mm. The French vanilla in here is delicious. It's nice and creamy. I like that it's, it was chocolate that you melted. It wasn't just chocolate syrup. It's kitschy, but it's fun. I'm gonna give this a three and a half. A nice three and a half. This hot water, I'm gonna rate it a five. Hydrating. Got the spicy potatoes with the pork and a bunch of other spices in here. It smells very spicy. It does have some kick to it. The pork is really nice. I think there's two kinds of pork here, it looks like. Like almost like, like bacon, and then just like slices of pork. The potatoes are nice and roasted. Like I said, a little bit of kick. The spicy roasted potatoes with the pork, a solid four out of five for me. So I got the steak medium well. Steak sauce. I don't know why I said it like that. Sauce, what accent is that? I don't know. Steak is nice and tender. The steak sauce is nice and light. And adding the salt and pepper, nice little, little touch. There's some more spices on the top of the steak as well. I would give the steak four. Four out of five, let's give it that. Yeah. The meal was delicious. The hot chocolate, delicious. And the ambiance in this restaurant, I think is great. The view, seeing the Christmas tree and everything, I think it's great. I recommend this restaurant, especially if you're a Jurassic Park fan. It just, it just feels nice. Like, it's not in your face Jurassic Park, right? Like, you have to look for the little, all the details and stuff, and I really enjoy that. I'm gonna finish this up and enjoy the rest of my evening here at University of Beijing, and then we're gonna head back to the hotel, and I'm gonna contemplate the tips and tricks so I can help you plan a trip. All right, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my steak. What a fun-filled few days at Universal Studios Beijing. 
Despite the cold, I still had a really good time. I've come up with some tips for you if you're planning to visit Universal Studios Beijing. Now this is based off of my first visit, first and only visit so far, and my own experience. So just so you know, your experience may vary. First up, hotel. So as I mentioned at the top of the video, we are staying at the Hilton, which is about six and a half kilometers away from Universal Studios Beijing. Now the hotel here has a shuttle that goes from here to the park twice a day. So it leaves at 8 a.m. to go to the park and then comes back at around 8.25, 8.30. You just have to ask the concierge to make sure you're on the list because they check to make sure everyone is on the bus. So make sure you let them know that you are going to Universal Studios so they can put you on the list. You can also take what the version of Uber is here, which is called DD, and I'll talk about that in, in a little bit here. But we did take it once because we actually did miss the shuttle and that was partially our fault. So we ended up taking that and it only cost, I think it was about four, four or five US dollars to go from Universal back to the hotel here. Now, if I was to do this again, um, I'd probably opt to stay on site if I could, because uh, there are two hotels and they range in price when I was checking. This is uh, end of December around Christmas time. It was starting at around 300 US a night upwards to 600 US dollars a night. So the upper $600 was the starting price for the hotel that's the big grand hotel that is right at the entrance that you saw in the video. And then there's another hotel that is a little walking distance from the park. And that one was starting at around $300. There's also a metro station there. So if you need to take the metro, there's a Universal Studios Beijing metro station. And you can take that to go wherever you need to go. I do recommend downloading the Metro Man app because that will tell you what trains to take and everything. Tickets for Universal Studios Beijing are pretty easy to buy. All you have to do is download the app and set up your account and then everything is in English and your card should work. I don't see why it wouldn't. And you can buy your tickets to Universal Studios Beijing. I don't see, unless you're visiting during like maybe uh, the Lunar New Year, which is in February, you probably don't really need to buy your tickets that far in advance. Based off of what I've looked, I think they're available about a month to two months in advance. You can check it in the app. It's all in there for you. Tickets start at about 45 US dollars for an adult ticket. And they do have the fluctuating prices. So it goes up to about 85 US dollars based off of what I saw earlier. And for Express Pass, you can get like the all-in-one Express Pass, which comes out to about 110 US dollars per person. Do I think you really need the Express Pass? Based off of what we did these last few days, um, if you're there early enough, I don't think you really need to. So they open the park about 15 minutes early based off of the last few days here. So the park was set to open at nine. They opened it at 8.45 and entry was super smooth. Everything is done with facial recognition. So your first day you bring your passport and they scan it in and everything's linked to your passport because when you buy your tickets, you got to put your passport information in. So it's all linked and it's done with facial recognition. So the entry into the park is very smooth. And so your ticket's linked to that. And if, you, and if you do buy Express Pass, that is also linked. It's pretty smooth. If I was to structure my day, what I would do is first thing, do Jurassic Park. I saw the wait time for that. It was hovering between 60 to 70 minutes at one point during midday. So when we did it, both times on both mornings, we were there just before nine and we got on the ride like, with a five minute wait and we were actually able to do it a couple of times. So make that your priority because Jurassic Park is definitely worth it. It is different than any of the other Jurassic Park rides at the other Universal Parks, so make sure you do that. The other one I would do is Jurassic Flyers. That one had a higher wait time, but it was closing a lot just because of the weather. And as I mentioned earlier, it looks like the magic number might be three degrees Celsius when things will open, like the outdoor coasters, like that and the Decepticoaster. So it, opened later in the day. I, I can't remember exactly when it opened. I think it was around noon or something like that when things were warming up. And the wait time was consistently 70 minutes or higher throughout the day. So 
I would probably do Jurassic Park first and then go to Jurassic Flyers first thing in the morning if it's open. Like if you're visiting during uh, winter, because it might be closed because it's obviously colder in the mornings. But if you're visiting during like spring or summer, I'm sure it'll it'll work fine. Do not miss the How to Train Your Dragon Untrainable show. That show is fantastic. Do not miss it. It shows multiple times a day. So I don't think you really need to worry about missing it. You can easily fit it into your schedule. The other thing to look at is the parade. The parade, based off of what I saw, it only happens once a day at around 1230. You can get, get it anywhere along the parade route near the front of the park. Just kind of show up maybe 10, 15 minutes before and just find a spot along the parade route. It's a fun parade. I really did enjoy it. The other attraction I think you can't miss is the Kung Fu Panda boat ride. That was an unexpected hit. I didn't even know it existed, if I'm being honest. I just happened to be walking through and I saw, oh, there's an attraction there. Let's go on. Let's see what it is. It's a boat ride and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I like the Kung Fu Panda movies, so it was, it was really cute and I like the mixture of all the animatronics plus the screens. The screens made it feel pretty grand. Um... I thought they did a really good job with the screen stuff. I thought it was a good balance between animatronics, practical effects, and then the screen stuff to just enhance what was being shown to us. Food options, there's tons of food options. There was a lot of food stalls, a lot of restaurants, which was very surprising to me. Like it felt like every land had like one or two restaurants. Like Jurassic Park had a couple restaurants. There was a Waterworld restaurant. A lot of snack food around. So much option for food there. The one app that you're gonna wanna get, and I think this is an absolute must, is Alipay. Alipay is an app that has a lot of things built into it. So first is Didi, which is China's version of Uber. That is really gonna come in handy for you. And then we also have the QR payment, so you can put your credit card information in and use that to pay for things. It's just, it makes life so much easier. And there's also stuff for the Metro in there and you can also book travel. Like that's how we actually booked our high-speed rail tickets from Shanghai to Beijing. It's an app that's just gonna make your life easier and it works flawlessly in Universal Studios Beijing. I didn't use my credit card anywhere in the park, like my physical credit card. I did have issues with my Canadian credit card initially with Alipay. The card that worked for me was Wise. It's a master card that you can put money on in different currencies. So I put Chinese Yuan on it and it was linked to my Alipay and it worked flawlessly. So I really recommend doing that. I have an affiliate link in the description if you wanna sign up for that. It just made my life so much easier. In addition to Alipay, make sure you also get WeChat. It is a chat application here in China and you may use that to maybe communicate with other people here in China. And for us uh, at the Hilton here, we actually used it to communicate with the concierge. So they were able to let us know like the status of the, sh the shuttles and stuff. So make sure you have that downloaded as well. As for connection on my phone, I use an eSIM called Airlo. And I'll, again, I'll put a link in the description for you. Uh, I bought 10 gigabytes and I relied on it heavily and I was able to connect to websites that you normally can't when you're in mainland China. So like Instagram, Facebook, uh, Messenger, those kind of apps, uh, YouTube and things like that. So I was able to access that and be able to talk to family and friends back home. So I do recommend getting an Airlo SIM. It's an eSIM so I don't have to uh, futz around with like my SIM from Japan and everything. It just, it just works. I can't stop thinking about that Jurassic Park ride and the How to Train Your Dragon ride and the Toothless Ice Cream Bar. Those are probably my top three things. Oh, that ice cream bar was so good. And I still have the popcorn, the dragon fruit popcorn. It's like two days old. This was a lot of information, I know, but I want to share as much information as I can with you. So hopefully you found this useful and I'll put another video up here for you so you can continue planning your trip. All right, Explorers, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.